Hello everyone, my name is Rachel and welcome back to another true crime video. So today's video is an extra video this week. It is a case update video. There's been so much going on in the true crime world the past couple of months, so I wanted to make sure I keep all of you guys updated on everything that's going on. Also, as I'm sure a lot of you have noticed by now, I have a new background. It's a very plain white background. If you've been following me for quite some time now, you know that I move homes pretty often and here I am once again, I moved again into a new house. And this time, my furniture has been taking forever to get here. I actually ordered a new desk and there was a super delay, so I ended up just canceling that order altogether and getting another one, so that's been taking quite a while. So this is how it's gonna be for the next couple of videos, so just bear with me with that until I get my whole new setup completed. Also, before we get into the case updates, I want to make sure I go ahead and say a huge thank you to today's sponsor, GlassesUSA.com. If you're anything like me and you're absolutely blind like me, then you know how difficult it can be to get your glasses directly from your eye doctor. However, GlassesUSA.com has made that process so much easier and so much more affordable by cutting out the middleman, GlassesUSA.com offers prescription eyeglasses up to 70% off of retail prices. You can now shop for your prescription eyeglasses online without ever leaving your home, all at affordable prices. GlassesUSA.com offers over 4,000 styles of eyeglasses and sunglasses, including in-home brands like Muse, which is the ones I'm wearing right now. These ones are new and I absolutely love them. Muse also has my favorite pair of sunglasses. I wear my Muse sunglasses literally every single day. I also have my pair of Amelia E eyeglasses, which is what these ones are, as well as Audido glasses, which is what these are. These are definitely my top three favorite brands right now. I also love having extra pairs of glasses and sunglasses. I always have a pair of sunglasses in my car and one in my purse to make sure that I always have a pair with me because my eyes are super sensitive to the sun and so anytime I'm outside, I need to be wearing a pair of sunglasses. I also like to have extra pairs of glasses laying around. I have them in my nightstand, in my purse, and in my car to make sure that no matter where I go, if my contacts are bothering my eyes, I can always just change into my pair of glasses or or if I'm on vacation and I end up forgetting my contacts, or if I end up just sleeping the night at a friend's house and I need my glasses the next day, then I always am covered. I also like that GlassesUSA.com has designer brands like Oakley, Ray-Ban, Gucci, and so many more. You can find any style and color that you can imagine, as well as specialty glasses like sports glasses, safety glasses, and so many more. Also with GlassesUSA.com, you can add any prescription to almost any pair of frames, including blue light blocking glasses, which is what these ones are, and I can definitely vouch for the high prescription fitting into almost any frame. I haven't had any issues with that, and I have a very high prescription. They also have this really cool try-on feature where you put in a picture of yourself to see how the glasses will actually look on you before spending the money to buy them, which is really helpful when you aren't quite sure exactly what kind of glasses suit you and your face. The best part, of course, is the price point. A complete pair of glasses starts at only $30, and free basic prescription lenses are included with every frame. It's so easy. All you do is enter your prescription, place your order, and that's it. You're done. Standard shipping is free on all orders no matter how much you spend, and if for some reason you aren't happy with your order, you have 14 days to return it for a refund, exchange, or 100% store credit, no hassle, and no questions asked. The exciting news is that by clicking the link in my description box below, my subscribers can get 65% off of their first order, which is such a great deal considering their glasses are already so affordable. So again, make sure you click the link in my description box below for 65% off of your first pair. Thank you again so much to GlassesUSA.com for sponsoring today's video. With all of that being said, let's get right into these case updates. So the first update I have is for the Katie Blavet case. I actually covered this one not too long ago and I'm really happy to see updates in this case already. So just as a recap, 22-year-old Katie had been in a relationship with a 33-year-old army recruiter, John Blavet. 
The two were quickly married, but from there, their relationship went downhill very fast. He would throw parties at their home and provide alcohol to minors, which was something that Katie was very uncomfortable with. Then, they were known to have these very intense arguments. There was one time where Katie actually confided in the police that John had threatened her with a gun, so soon after that, the two were separated. By October 24th, 2016, at around 3 p.m., Katie had been getting off of her work shift at PetSmart. She had then called her niece Cheyenne because the two of them had plans to go out for lunch that day, but during this phone call, Katie seemed like she was in a pretty bad mood. Katie said that she just needed to drive around for a couple of hours and clear her head. She said that she would get back into contact with Cheyenne later that day, but hours passed and nobody had heard from Katie. Searches were conducted for Katie, but only a couple of hours later, her body was discovered in the basement of an abandoned house that teens and young adults would like to go to sometimes. At this time, unfortunately, Katie had been found stabbed to death. At this point, Greenville police knew that John probably had something to do with the death of his estranged wife, so they immediately put out warrants to arrest him, but by the time they went to arrest him, he was gone. This 33-year-old man had run off with his 17-year-old girlfriend. She was ultimately found in Oregon in December of 2016, and she was brought home safely, and she was questioned, but she didn't really know much information on Katie's murder other than where some of her personal belongings had been hidden. By 2019, Katie's case had been featured on the show In Pursuit with John Walsh to try and further spread awareness about this missing fugitive. But by early 2022, the U.S. Marshals cold case team was working with investigators from several agencies, including the District of South Carolina, the Carolinas Regional Fugitive Task Force, Simpsonsville Police, South Carolina Highway Patrol and the U.S. Army Criminal Investigation Division to find John Blavet, and they did. By July 20th of 2022, John was actually found living in Medford, Oregon after being on the run for six years. He was living under the name of Ben Klein. He was taken into custody without any incident and is currently being held in Jackson County Jail pending extradition back to South Carolina to face the murder charges against him. He faced a judge for his bond hearing on August 4th, 2022, and of course, he was denied bond. Katie's family did did attend the hearing, and Katie's mother, Patricia, went on to say, quote, it's one thing that they tell you, but actually seeing it, you feel like you're coming close to the end of a very long road. I'm just so glad he's caught, and he's finally here, and can finally stand trial. She said that she's never lost hope that John would be found and held responsible, but now actually seeing it happen is just such an amazing feeling, and I can't even imagine. She said, though, that she is going to be fighting until John is officially sentenced. She said, quote, we got a life sentence without Katie and he deserves a life sentence. This is such amazing news and I'm really looking forward to seeing the trial that might come of this. It's going to be interesting to see what he was doing for the past six years and if he claims innocence for the murder of Katie. The next case updates come from the Murdoch case. Now, this is a case that has way too many twists and turns to completely review in this video, so I highly suggest you watch the video that I made about it last year if you do not remember, but let me just do a quick reminder and keep you guys updated on everything else that's been going on in this case. So, the Murdoch family is a very long line of lawyers who also served for the 14th Judicial Circuit who are well-established in South Carolina. Alex Murdoch, in particular, was married to Maggie Murdoch and had two sons, Buster and Paul Murdoch. By 2015, 19-year-old Stephen Smith was found deceased in the middle of a rural road in Hampton County, and his death was ruled a hit-and-run accident. However, there was much more evidence to this case that suggested that it might actually be a beating. 
Stephen Smith was gay, and he was also Buster Murdoch's classmate, and there was a suspicion that this was a targeted homophobic attack. Then, by 2018, the Murdoch's long-term housekeeper, Gloria Satterfield, had died at the age of 57 after she had allegedly had an accidental fall on the stairs at the Murdoch home. Then, by February of 2019, Paul Murdoch was involved in a drunk driving boat crash incident that killed 19-year-old Mallory Beach. Once again, it's thought that Paul was drunk driving the boat and that he's the one that caused the accident that took Mallory's life, but of course, he said that it wasn't him. He said that he wasn't the one who was driving. He went in front of a jail and he went in front of a judge, he posted bail, and he never accepted responsibility for what he allegedly did. But by July of 2021, before Paul could ever go back in front of a judge and take responsibility for Mallory's death, Paul and his mother, Maggie, were found shot to death on their estate. Alex had discovered them, allegedly, after taking his own father to the hospital. Their two bodies were found near dog kennels, and they were found to have been shot with two different guns. Maggie was shot with an assault rifle, while Paul was shot with a shotgun. So, now getting into some of the updates that have come out about this case, I did briefly touch on some of them in my last update video, but there's a lot more where that came from. By September of 2021, Alec was confronted by others at his law firm that they owned, and he was accused of embezzling millions of dollars from the company. Only days later after this, he was shot in the head on a rural road in Hampton County. He called the police saying that he had been changing a tire when he was approached by a stranger who was offering help with changing the tire, but instead, the man shot him in the head. But when he arrived to the hospital, the wounds were only superficial and he survived without any serious life-threatening consequences. But only weeks after this, Alec had admitted that he had hired a friend to shoot and kill him so that his only surviving son, Buster, would receive $10 million dollars in his life insurance payout. Of course, he was arrested for this and so was a man named Curtis Smith. Curtis Smith had been a former client of Alex and he had been supplying him with drugs as well. This whole time, Alec also had an opioid addiction that he had been dealing with behind the scenes. After this, Alec posted bail and he checked himself into a drug rehab center. But shortly after this, he was arrested on more fraud charges. So, going back to Gloria Satterfield's case, shortly after her death, her family filed a wrongful death suit. Well, Alec settled this case, promising her family a $4.3 million payout but the family never got the funds. He manipulated the family and he ended up embezzling the money that they were awarded so that they didn't see any of this money. This was just one example of many cases where Alex would settle for large amounts of money only to embezzle the money for his own use. So, shortly after checking into the rehab facility, he was arrested on the fraud charges relating to Gloria's case. At this time, he was denied bail and his assets were frozen. Then, on July 14th of 2022, Alec Murdoch was indicted on charges of double homicide of his wife and his son. By July 20th, though, he pled not guilty to these charges, so as of right now, that is where this case sits. They also have reopened the investigation into Stephen's death, so hopefully more will come out about that. But all of this is just such a twisted web. It's all so confusing, and the whole thing just runs so deep, so I won't be surprised if even more comes out about this case and that there's even more going on behind the scenes, but I will keep you guys updated as more information comes out, and I'm really looking forward to the trial that comes out of all of this. The next case update is regarding Trina Hunt. So, as a reminder, Trina Hunt went missing when she was 48 years old on January 18th, 2021. She was married to a man named Ian, and they lived in Port Moody, British Columbia in Canada. Now, when I made the original video, so many people corrected me on the pronunciation of his name, saying that it's actually pronounced Ian but it's not. It is pronounced Ian, so just to clear that up in case people want to keep correcting me, 
it is pronounced Ian. But either way, on January 16th, Ian said that him and Trina had drove an hour and a half up to go camping in Hope, British Columbia to visit a campground that they had used to visit when they were in their 20s. Before the 16th, Trina had been texting back and forth with a friend to set up a virtual cocktail date because this was in the middle of the pandemic when all the lockdowns were happening, so they wanted to still get together, but they were going to do it virtually. However, Trina didn't end up replying to the coworker until January 17th after this alleged camping trip, but this text message didn't sound like Trina at all, according to the friend. She told the friend that she had been doing this digital detox and that she wasn't using technology at all that weekend, so that's why it took her so long to reply. When police asked Ian about this, he confirmed that they were doing a digital detox. Then, after Ian reported Trina as missing, police came to their home to investigate and they found that nothing looked out of place except they actually found out that their home security system had never been turned on, which it almost always was. But Ian had an excuse for that. He said that Trina didn't like the beeping sound, but everybody else in Trina's family said that that just was not true. It never bothered her before, so why all of a sudden would she be bothered by a beeping sound from their security system? Throughout this entire thing, Ian continued to claim that he just thought that Trina up and left her life, but her family said that she had absolutely no reason to leave her life and there is no way that she did. By the morning of March 29th of 2021, three and a half months after she went missing, Trina's remains were found in Hope, British Columbia, the same area where Ian said that they had been camping that weekend. The last we heard of this case was that police were executing a search warrant on the homes and cars of Ian and his parents. But as of June 3rd, 2022, Ian was actually arrested. He was seen being taken away from his home, still in slippers that morning. Trina's family was expecting to finally see him be charged, but by the next day, on June 4th, he was released from police with no charges pending. So, obviously, the family was just completely devastated, and they said that this was just a false hope, and that this entire thing just seemed so random. And that's pretty much where this case lies today. No charges still, nothing that's come out about why the charges were put against him or why he was released, but it is clear that police are looking at Ian, and again, I have no idea why he was arrested or released, but I guess we're just going to have to keep waiting for more answers. The next case update is on Sherry Papini. We did talk about her case in the last case update video, so I'm just going to give you a very brief reminder. Sherry Papini is the woman who went missing in November of 2016 and then reappeared on Thanksgiving of that year. There was national attention on her case, and people really thought that something horrible had happened to her. She was in a really bad condition when she was found, but there were certain details about her story that made people question whether she was actually telling the truth or not. But in March of this year, police did come out with charges against her. At the time of the case update, she had just been arrested and we went over all of the details regarding what led her to being arrested. But a month later after that, in April, she did plead guilty to charges of making false statements as well as mail fraud. By taking the plea, she agreed to pay restitution to all of her victims, including the $308,000 that we discussed last video, which she had gotten from the California Victim Compensation Board. But she still has not been sentenced for this, so that's pretty much all of the update we have on this. She could face a max sentence of five years for lying to a federal agent and then 20 years for mail fraud. I doubt she's going to get 20 years. Some people are saying that she might not even get any time in jail at all, so we will probably see next month what her actual sentencing is. But those are all of the case updates that I have for you guys. It's always so exciting seeing movement in these cases that we talk about. As far as any of the other cases that I've covered, 
I did do research to see if there were any updates that I'm missing, but I didn't see anything else. If you do know of any other case updates that I am missing, please let us know in the comments below. But that is all I have for today's case update video. If you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and let me know if you want to see more case update videos in the future. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week and don't forget to turn the notification bell to on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Don't forget to click the link down below and head to glassesusa.com for 65% off of your order. Don't forget to go ahead and follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Both will also be linked down below and if you have absolutely any case suggestions, please make sure to send those suggestions over to my email at rachelshannoncases at gmail.com. With that, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!